You're listening to the Voice of Russia in London. I'm Alice Lanyardo. In recent years, female writers have come to the fore in Russia. Names such as Lyudmila Ulitskaya, Tatyana Tolstaya, and Nina Sadur. Today, there's a brand new generation of young women writers in their twenties and early thirties. I invited three of them into our studio, together with publisher Natalia Perova, who has brought out English translations of their work. In the last twenty years, Russian women writers have gone from being virtually invisible to enjoying wide popular acclaim. Natalia Perova, who heads the Glass Publishing House, has witnessed this dramatic change. The first collection uh, we published was uh, in 1992, when uh, women were practically absent from publishing plans and from literary magazines. So I collected the best women writers at that time, and these were very pathetic stories about, you know, how tragic women's fate is. What is more, women were not aware of uh, the tragic situation of their lives. Then, several years later, we published a collection which was uh, closely showing the fighting spirit. Women were fighting for their rights, insisting on their equality with men. Then, several more years later, we published another collection of women's writing, which showed that women took their equality for granted. And now, well, there were other collections, and each time they showed progress in uh, women's consciousness. In the quality of their writing, but what is obvious, women today take a very important role in society. They are in all fields, including literature. If you look at the publishing plans today, you will see half of the name would be women, and their works, according to publishers, sell much better. The young authors who came to our studio had different attitudes towards being categorized as women writers. Irina Bogatyryova was born in Kazan. She's won several prizes for her novels, which tackle issues as varied as the rise of the communist movement in Russia among the younger generation, young people entering religious sects, and the joys of hitchhiking. I write about my generation, and uh, it doesn't matter about uh, women or men. I don't try to separate problems of uh, male or female, because for me, for me, all problems of uh, my generation is not men and women. For me, the main thing that I try to explain in, in my books uh, is uh, what my generation is uh, thinking about life and uh, what we try to achieve in our life. I think it is our seeking a place in in new Russia and our place in a uh, new history of Russia. Irina Bogatyryova, there. Anna Leonidova is in her early thirties and hails from the village of Khmelnyky in central Russia. She now lives in Moscow, where she works as the editor of a popular women's magazine, Kristyanka, or The Peasant Woman. She's had several novels published, and last year she won the Russian Debut Prize for Young Writers, as well as the Russian Bestseller Prize for her semi-fantasy novel Before I Die. The novel is about the friendship between five Moscow women in their sixties. Anna clearly identifies herself as a woman writer. The women's questions are more important for me. I know that um, more interesting question for me is uh, how to uh, stay a uh, woman and how to be successful person in this world. It's difficult to find the right balance between all these parts of life, but both of them are important. Anna points out that despite the advances of modern technology, making housework easier, for example. Women still face particular difficulties. It's very difficult uh, to have a time to give birth, for example. As I know, it's not only in our country; it's uh, in Europe too. The problem is the same. It's very difficult to find the right men and uh, to make good relationships with them. That was Anna Leonidova. Many women writers start their serious work after the age of fifty, after they've raised their families. What's striking about this group of writers? Is that they've started so young, often completing several novels before the age of thirty. Natalia Perova is taken aback by how different this group is 
from previous generations of women writers. Today, the young women are slightly different in this respect. They are very sober-minded, very practical, very uh, pragmatic, I would say. And uh, I suppose they would first make careers and then maybe have children. They're not worried about children. They're not worried about getting married. They feel quite, you know, well, self-assured without a husband to take care of them. You know, there's so many gadgets that make their lives easier. You know, in our time, even washing was a huge problem. Today, it's no problem at all. So they, they actually can do some work and at the same time have children. Lots of women work at home. And, uh, well, that allows them to have children. So, But many of them choose not to have children, while careers are more, in, more important for them. So well, I'm not surprised that they uh, well, speak so calmly about <laughs> having children or not having children. It's just not an issue for them, very strangely. But modern life in Russia, though in many ways easier than in the past, is still very fast-paced. So how do these young women find the time to write novels? Anna Lavrinenko is 26 and lives in Yaroslavl in central Russia. She's been writing fiction since the age of 11 and in 2006 she won the debut prize for her short story Eight Hours to Sunrise. I work as a company lawyer uh, during the day but at night I turn into a writer. <laughs> when I start uh, writing I feel myself better. Anna Lavrinenko there. Irina Bogatryova, meanwhile, works from home. For me, writing is, uh, is a whole life. My husband and I, we run uh, our own business. We have an internet shop of uh, ethnic music instruments. Uh, it is a very interesting business and uh, it gives me a lot of uh, material for my writing. Irina Bogatryova there. Anna Leonidova has to stand up on public transport on her long journey home from work because it's so crowded so she looks forward to sitting down at her beloved writing desk in the evening. I have a great uh, table at my home and uh, even when I come uh, home very tired, when I see it, I feel happy and I want to take a place on it and start writing. Anna Leonidova talking about how much she enjoys writing. So nothing seems to be stopping this generation of young women writers. They don't seem distracted by the materialism that sometimes seems to dominate Moscow life or put off by the fact that many Russians today, just like their British counterparts, don't read serious novels very often. We look forward to hearing more from them.